Dean, who has a faith, man, I'm excited. Hey, uh, we're in a series called Never Too Young. Somebody say Never Too Young. Never too young. Me and Pastor Cam, before the beginning of the year, every year, we get a word for the year. Just to give us a direction, give us a strategy on our, our messages that we preach. And what God gave to us was never too young. And in this, in this uh, word of the year, in this series, what we're really encouraging young people is to, to say, hey, y- you being used by God isn't based on your age. It's actually based on the faith that you have. That God, throughout all of the Bible, used young people to transform the world. We are here because young people said yes to the call of God on their life and began to step out boldly. So you're never too young. You don't have to wait until you're older. You don't have to wait wait until you're in college or when you have a family, you know that you can be used by God right now. Do you know that? You don't have to wait until everything's perfect. You don't have to have the whole Bible memorized. You don't have to be the best at communication. No, you can be used right now right now. And I believe that in this series, it's, it's really helping young people to know that God actually wants to use you. And, uh, and we're going to continue it tonight. And tonight, the focus is you're never too young to train for battle. And we're going to be pulling from 1 Timothy 4. Turn to your neighbor and say, get ready. Get ready. 1 Timothy 4. Uh, this is an awesome passage. You can flip there. Who has their paper Bible? Come on. Come on, the real Christians. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Who has their Bibles on their phone? Come on now. Oh, hey, I love technology. You can turn on your Bibles. If you don't have the Bible app, download it. Uh, read the verse of the day. Uh, it's free. Come on now. First Timothy 4, verse 7, it says, Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. This is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. That is why we labor and strive, because we have to put our hope in the living God, who is a savior of all people, and especially of those who believe. So we're talking about training for battle. Have you ever been unprepared for something? Um, I have a tendency to be unprepared for things in life. Like in ninth grade, I had to take algebra twice uh, because I was unprepared for the test. And uh, so I would just guess through all the tests, A, A, B, C, 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 C. Uh, That's C too many times, so it's probably not C. It's probably B, you know what I'm saying? I was unprepared for the test, so I would just guess on everything, and I failed because I didn't didn't prepare. also, I, whenever I first started driving, uh, I was unprepared, and uh, I thought you, uh, you went, you pressed a gas with your right foot, and you, bro- you, you pressed a brake with your left foot. And uh, I almost killed me and my mom as I'm driving down the road because I was unprepared. Uh, one of the worst times that I've been unprepared was whenever I got into my first fight. Um, I was I was unprepared. I was uh, in fifth grade in recess, and uh, I, I you know I got into an argument with the wrong guy, and I was feeling a little bit confident, and I was like, "Hey, meet me by the flagpole after school, bruh." I looked at him straight in the eye, and I walk away, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, my heart." dropped into my stomach, and I was terrified. You know, I was walking through school. I was so nervous. My knees were weak. My palms were sweaty. My arms were heavy, and there was vomit on my sweat. Um... I, I was nervous, and, uh, and I, I didn't really know what to do. I didn't know how to fight, and I'm going through school, and finally the dreaded moment came when the bell rung, and it was the end of school, and I'm making my way towards the flagpole. He's making his way towards the flagpole, and we're standing there surrounded by dozens of people, and, uh, and they're encouraging us, fight! 
fight, fight. And I'm thinking to myself, yo, I don't even know how to fight right now, but, but I make my way towards this kid. I put my arms up. He makes his way towards me. And, and as he's getting closer, he brings his fist back and punches me right in the face. And I knocked down on the ground and I ran home to my mommy and cried all night. And, uh, and I, was, I was unprepared for this fight. And, and I, I, I failed to defeat, I failed to fight this guy because I had no training and I had no ability to, to fight him. And when we don't train, we are setting ourselves up to fail. And we train at everything that we want to be good at. You train if you want to be good in education. You read your books. You take your tests. You, you quiz. You're trying to get into that college. So you do everything you can do to train to be good at something. You, you train whenever you're trying to be strong. You go to the gym. You know, you eat the right foods. Uh, you know, you, you take the protein shake. You, you do whatever you need to do to get better at it so that you, you are training. If you, want, if you want to be smart, if you want to do anything in life, we train at it so that we can get better. And in our text today, Paul is writing to Timothy, and he said, train yourself to be godly. Did you know it's important for us to train ourselves to be godly? It, it, it's not going to happen naturally. You turning godly doesn't just happen. A actually, in fact, the opposite is true. If you just come in and raise your hand for salvation and confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, and then you walk out and you never put into practice anything in the word of God, even though you made a verbal commitment, you're not going to naturally just say, man, I'm living just like how God would. You, you're not naturally going to become godly. In fact, you're going to become more like the world. Even though you say you're a Christian does not mean that you're naturally going to become godly. It's going to take a little bit of training. And we need to understand that we have to train to become godly. And godliness is incredibly important. But, but the question tonight is, why do we need to be godly? Like, why can't we just do whatever we want? Why can't we just live how we want? Why do we need to be godly? In Ephesians 6, verse 10, it says, Be strong in the Lord in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly realm. What the scripture is saying is that we are in a battle. That as soon as we stepped into this Christian walk, that we're not just jumping around and you know, flower fields and everything's perfect. No, do you know that we are in a battle, that the enemy, he is actually on a mission to ruin this generation. The, the enemy is after us. Whenever you step into Christianity, there is now a target on your back that not everything is going to be easy. Not everything is going to be perfect. The, the, the depression rate is at an all-time high right now. The people who are medicated are at the all-time high right now. You know that people are getting divorced at an all-time high right now. Like you're in relationships and maybe you're wanting to get married one day. The, the, the rates are going crazy through the roof. People are committing suicide at the highest rate we have ever seen. The enemy is after this generation. The enemy doesn't want you to walk in your purpose. The enemy doesn't want you to walk in peace. The enemy doesn't doesn't want you to walk in confidence. In fact, the enemy would rather you stay in your bedroom depressed and medicated than stepping out and being a force for this world. The enemy is after us as Christians. And the enemy thinks he has power over Christians, but I have good news because Jesus came down, died on the cross, rose from the dead, gave us a Holy Spirit, and now we can walk in authority and in power, and the enemy has no authority over young people because he has given us the power. But if we never train ourselves to walk in godliness, then we are going to be torn down by everything that the enemy is throwing at us. 
The enemy doesn't want you to succeed. The enemy doesn't want you to step into your purpose. What has the enemy kept you from? What has the enemy thrown at your life? Sometimes we can look at our situation and say, this is just how things are. But I'm going to let you know that things aren't just happening because they happen. Sometimes it is an enemy that is throwing stuff at your way to distract you. Maybe that relationship that you thought was from, from God, maybe that relationship is pulling you away from what God wants you to have in your life. Maybe you thought that that college acceptance was, was from God. Never mind. Let me not go there. Let me not go there. Let me not go there. <laughs> uh, y'all don't want me to speak the truth tonight. Sometimes good things and bad things can come from the enemy to pull us away from what God wants to do in our lives. Just because she makes you feel good doesn't mean that she's from God. Hello. Just because it makes you feel high for a moment does not mean that it's from God. Even though it's distracted you from your depression and your pain, does not mean it's from God. Because God has something so much better than a quick fix that can make you feel good for a moment. God has something so much more. God has victory for you. God has peace for you. God has hope for you. God has a calling for you. God has a future for you. And we can't stay down in the place that the enemy has brought us. We have to walk in our calling. If we never learn to train, we will never learn to fight. And we're looking to defeat this enemy that is after us. But first, before we can fight, we have to learn to train. To defeat the enemy, we need more godliness. We don't need more people just doing whatever they want. We don't need people living comfortably. We don't need people just going with the crowd. We don't need people to just get through life. No, we need people that are on a mission to train themselves for battle. It is not just pastors. It is not just leaders. It is not just ELC. It is young people training themselves up to step into battle. And Paul wrote to Timothy, he said, train yourself to be godly. And this is what we have to know about the Bible. Sometimes you read the Bible and it's so old and maybe sometimes ancient and you don't really understand it. The Bible was not written to us, but the Bible was written for us. So whenever Paul is writing to Timothy, train yourself to be godly, it is for us to learn from so that now we are learning from what Paul wrote to Timothy and we can apply it for ourselves. Train yourself to be godly. So I hear the echoes of Paul's voice saying, train yourself to be godly. This is a man who started churches. This is a man who discipled people. This is a man who had impact. And he is telling you tonight, train yourself to be godly. So we're going to look at 1 Timothy 4 and learn how to train. So to be ready for battle, number one, we need to train persistently. It said in verse 10, we labor and strive. We labor and strive. Uh, uh, have you ever ran a marathon before? Um, you know, marathons, I, I would never. That just seems like it's from the enemy. <laughs> uh, but um, I, I, I've never ran a marathon. But what if uh, tomorrow uh, I signed you up for a marathon to run tomorrow? And, uh, and you would have to go and do it. Um, more than likely, you would not be able to do it. It's probably impossible because you have not trained for it. It takes, it takes months and dedication to train for something that serious. And sometimes we feel like in, in our life that we can just jump into Christianity and have a momentary experience and feel like everything is just going to happen the way that, no, actually to have success in our training in godliness, it's not just a momentary moment, but it is a journey that we're walking on. So you may not be fully godly. You may not look like everything that God has for you right now. But this is, this is a journey. I'm going to be serving God until I die. And whenever I'm 95 and I have multiple grandchildren, I'm still going to be loving God. I'm still going to be having purpose. I'm still going to have passion. Because this is, this is not just for your teenage years. This is, this is for a long time. 
And if something comes against you that is just a, a horrible time and then you just walk away from God, you are doing a disservice to your call because this call is for a long time. And you may not have everything put together in a moment, but I'm gonna let you know if you keep training, if you keep working, if you keep reading your word, if you keep praying, if you keep doing the things that the Bible encourages us, uh, us to do, we will begin to step into everything that God has for us. Devote yourself to the journey, not to just a momentary decision. In Galatians 6, 9, it says, so let's not get rid of, or let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. And I'm gonna let you know there are times that we wanna give up. There are times that things are hard, but I'm gonna let you know you gotta keep coming to church. You gotta keep being in community. You gotta keep reading your word. You gotta keep doing what you need to do because what you are looking for will come. And whenever I first became a Christian, I was super confused. Uh, people were raising their hands, and they were screaming at the top of their lungs in worship, and they were reading this book that I had zero idea about. Like, I, I was trying to read Psalms, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I was like, man, what's Psalms, man? Like, um, I, I, I was so confused. I, I didn't know what to do. I was extremely, I was extremely overwhelmed. And maybe there's some of you who feel that way. Like we're worshiping and we're singing these songs and we're opening up this word, but you may be extremely confused. You may, you may not actually understand how to be a, a good Christian and how to apply the things in the Bible. And uh, most people don't train because they just don't know how to. They, they are a little confused. They're, they're like, man, what do I do? Where do I start? Do I start reading at the front of the Bible? Do I start reading at the back of the Bible? Do I open it up to the middle? Where do I start? And, and we feel like it's unrelatable because it was written thousands of years ago and we're confused, we're confused. So instead of us training at all, we don't because we're confused. And has anybody ever been confused about Christianity before? It's like, it's like the blood of Jesus, it covers us. It's like, how does it cover us? He died 2,000 years ago. His blood is not even here. How do I get covered by the blood of Jesus? And, you know, we're in sin. What is sin? And sometimes we can be extreme. Can I be a little practical tonight? Um, these are real things. I, I meet with people all the time. These are real things. People ask me questions and they're confused. And if you never give training a chance, you will never grow into godliness. And I'm going to let you know, it may be confusing right now, but this is the most beautiful journey you'll ever be on in your entire life. This will set you free. This will help you. This will help your marriage. This will help your future family. This will help your future career. And it may be confusing for a moment, but it's worth it. It is worth it. It is worth it. Wow, the piano is already here. Now I'm gonna sound really spiritual. To be ready for battle, we must, number one, train persistently, and number two, train properly. The context of this scripture is Paul writing to Timothy. Paul was an older, versed apostle who has gone through a lot of seasons. Timothy was a young leader. And Paul and Timothy had a relationship. They had uh, really, the, the relationship was a mentorship relationship. This was something, someone that Timothy would learn from. This is someone that he would, he would get knowledge from and wisdom from. This, Paul was writing to Timothy. And so my thought is, a lot of the times we don't train because we don't know how to. And we need to be like Timothy who learned from mentorship. And oftentimes we don't train because we don't know how to. And I went to a gym uh, back whenever I first started working out and I had zero idea on how to work out. I went there and I was there for an hour and I was like, how do I do this stuff? Like these machines are extremely confusing. And I, would, I was trying, but like I was there for an hour and I left and it was ineffective because I didn't know how to. 
This is a lot of the times how we feel like in Christianity. We're here, we're going to church, we're spending hours, we're doing this, but I just don't know what to do. The, the, how I started to grow in my knowledge to work out, to get stronger, was I had somebody who came, who had worked out before, who knew what to do, and they showed me exactly how to do bench press how to do squats, how to do curls, how to do the awkward machines that nobody knows how to do unless somebody shows them. They, he showed me that. And now I'm extremely strong, you know, and, uh, and have awesome muscles because somebody trained me. And maybe the answer to your lack of training is somebody to mentor you. Maybe if you would not just live in this awkward tension of I don't know what to do. This is what sometimes will happen is we don't, we're so confused, but we're afraid to ask for help. But I'm gonna let you know, if you can learn to pull on and pull from other people who know more than you, that's when you're gonna go to the next level in your training. Can I be practical? I know the piano's playing and it's like, should I like cry right now? No, you don't need to cry. You need to ask for a mentor. You, <laughs> um, you need to stop trying to figure everything out on your own and you need to go ask somebody who knows how to read the Bible and you need to ask them a few questions. I wrote these down. You need to ask them, how do I read the Bible? How do I pray? Have you ever tried to pray and you're like, God, um, I love you. <sighs> what else do I say? <laughs> Do I, do I look up or do I look down? <laughs> do I yell or do I pray quietly? Do I do it in my head? It's confusing, I know. But it can be made simple when you ask a mentor. How do I share my testimony, mentor? Do I, do I stand out on the top of the table at my school and scream it out to everybody? If you want to, no, I'm kidding. Share your testimony, how do I put God first? Maybe you're putting sports first. Maybe a mentor can show you that you can put God first and still succeed in the sport that you're in. How would it look like to represent Christ in my school? How can you, how can I pray for other people? These are the different things that you can ask somebody to mentor. And I mentor people all the time. I meet with like three to five students a week. Like I'm, I'm constantly meeting with people. I'm constantly training young people. But can I be honest? I can't train all of you <laughs> as much as I want to. But we have incredible leaders here that want to mentor you and train you and show you how to live a life for God. And it may feel awkward at first, but it is the most important thing. Whenever I first became a Christian, I had no idea. Somebody asked me, I was at a small group and this guy named Keon was like, hey Ryan, can you read John 5? And, uh, and I'm flipping in, in uh, Genesis page by page, trying to find the book of John. And uh, the kids in the room laughed at me, but Pastor Keon taught me. He was like, hey, this is how you find the scripture. This is how you read. This is how you pray. This is how you live consistently. And I am a product of his mentorship. And I'm gonna let you know that there is, the, in this journey, you looking back in 10 years, you're gonna say, man, I am who I am today because of that ELC leader. I am who I am today because of that leader who showed me how to read. I am who I am today. Because if you're unprepared and you go off to college or to a career and you never know how to do it now, you're gonna miss out on the opportunity to grow in it. So I'm gonna let you know, find a mentor, please. Please for me and for you. Mostly for you. <laughs>